You are listening to the Tampa Motormouth in the zone behind the microphone on the Sports Shuffle Podcast. Here with you on a Saturday as Dwight Howard finally made up his decision and his mind, which was we weren't sure there for a while, and he is a Houston Rockin', sort of wondering what's going on with the whole odds of the Rockets to win the NBA title and also the Lakers. The decision definitely, or I should say the indecision, definitely had an effect. This posted by RJ Bell on the pregame.com forum. Houston Rocket odds. Current odds, 12-1 to 1 to win the NBA title. They move from 25-15, to 15, and then from 50 before the, and then before the announcement, and then from 15-1 to 1 to 12-1 to 1 after the announcement. The LA Lakers odds now are 101 to win the NBA title. If Howard had returned to L.A., it would have been 25-1. to 1. What a difference someone makes, even if they happen to be a little bit of a diva. Now we check out what happened in the world of baseball yesterday. Rays pounded the White Sox 8-3. Axelrod exiting early. Rays also had two back to, had, uh, back-to-back home runs from Jose Molina and Kelly Johnson. Pittsburgh Pirates over the Chicago Cubs 6-2 as Laureano ended up helping out his own cause with an RBI single in the second. Philadelphia Phillies over the Atlanta Braves as Lee wins number 10. Yankees' Vernon Wells, the hero of the game, 3-2 over the Baltimore Orioles. The Detroit Tigers blank the Cleveland Indians, 7-2 Zilcho, as the Tigers really end up supporting their starter, one Rick Porcello, who picks up his fifth win. Washington, can you tell Bryce Harper is back? Yep, they end up beating the Padres 8-5, as Jason Worth posted his second straight three-hit game from the sixth spot. Then Toronto, the second shutout of the night over. The Twins, 4 to nothing. Twins' woes continue. As the, it was the night of Jose's as Bautista and Reyes both posted a pair of ribbies with Mark Burley on fire. Then the Mariners triumphed over the Reds on the road, 4 to 2, as Aaron Harang had six solid innings in his first start at the Great American Ballpark against his former comrades of the same uniform, rather I should say the different uniform. Then Texas putting up a 10 spot over their interstate rival, the Houston Astros, as their woeful week continues. Nelson Cruz and Cruz Control with a grand army. Then the Mets, how about the Mets putting up a 12 spot on the Brewers? As Wheeler ends up picking up his second win, and Edgin, E-D-G-I-N, picking up his first save of the year. 12 from the Mets. Really? Same team? Those Mets? Oakland A's over the KC Royals, 6-3, to three as Malone is tough, and picks up his eighth win. How about Grant Balfour, former Tampa Bay Ray alumni, picking up his 22nd save. Then we've got the hapless Marlins against the Cardinals as the Cardinals end up getting the hook line and the sinker, beating the Marlins 4-1. to Westbrook picking up his fifth win of the year. Colorado getting shut up by Arizona Diamondbacks as Skaggs picks up his second win of the year there. That would be the third shutout of the night. LA and Boston hooking up in one of the on another one of the late games and Boston winning six to two. As how about David Ortiz with a two run pinch hit homer and Mike Napoli with a solo shot against his former club. And in the final game of the night is the Dodgers. That's right, the Dodgers. How about that? The night that the Mets had twelve and the Dodgers have ten. Absolutely stomping the Giants and romping them as Juan Uribe doubled, tripled, and homered while racking up seven rebies. Uribe, with seven rebies, lead the Dodgers against the somewhat struggling Giants. As Matt Cain just lasted two and one toyed innings, gave up eight runs. So, I have to see what happens today, as that was in Dini yesterday. Joel, Joel, Joel Verlin. 
Urban Meyer finally broke the silence about Aaron Hernandez. Quote, prayers and thoughts are with the family and the friends of the victim. Meyer told Tim May of the Columbus Dispatch, quote, relating or blaming these serious charges to the University of Florida, myself or our staff is wrong and irresponsible, close quote. Open quote, I just received an email from a friend where there is an accusation of multiple failed drug tests by Hernandez covered up by University of Florida or the coaching staff. This is absolutely not true, Meyer said. Quote, Hernandez was being held to the same drug testing policy as every other player. He was an athlete at Florida four to seven years ago. There are some comments being made that are not correct. Our staff, myself, and our families work very hard to mentor and guide him. And from page two... How about one of two stories here? The first one coming from Clayton County, Georgia, as a crash involving seven cars shut down Interstate 75 southbound in Clayton County for six hours. Crash happened I-75 near CW Grant Parkway around 3 a.m. Friday. Clayton police said a pedestrian in the road was struck by a car and there was a domino effect. Detectives told Channel 2's Tom Jones that six of the seven drivers were driving under the influence, five were charged with DUI, and the pedestrian was charged with being a pedestrian in the roadway. A sixth driver is expected to be charged after being released from the hospital. So, absolutely, you have to wonder if the pedestrian was also DUI. And the second of the two stories, if you thought that was crazy, oh, wait for this one. That would be a headline. This coming from ESPN Football in Brazil. Are you ready for this? Referee beheaded after a killing player. Story July 6, 2013 by ESPN staff. An amateur football match in Brazil led to two deaths as a referee was beheaded by spectators after he stabbed a player. The shocking incidences occurred in Maranhão, M-A-R-A-N-H-A-O, Brazil, last Sunday. According to reports, referee o Octavio Giordano, O-T-A-I-V-O, G-O-R-D-A-O, -O da Silva, hopefully I'm saying that right, fatally stabbed footballer Yoser, Jose J O S E N I R Dos Santos Abreu. Dos Santos Abreu is believed to have struck the referee after questioning a decision in retaliation. De Silva stabbed the player. Having witnessed the incident, an outraged group of spectators turned on the referee. He was tied up, beaten, stoned, and quartered. They then, are you ready for this? Put his head on a stake and planted it in the middle of the pitch. One man has been arrested over the incident. Police are searching for two more suspects. Walter Acosta, who I'm assuming is the law enforcement officer in charge of the case, and in a statement he said, quote, one crime never justifies another crime. Actions like this do not collaborate with the legality of state law. So if you think sports are rough in our neck of the woods, ooh, Ooh, yeah, just a little bit crazy there. You're in the zone, in the zone with the temper motor mouth. And leaving you with the fail of the week. <laughs> At least one of them, uh, yes, it comes from Florida. Do you even have to ask? Headline, busted man insisted on taking briefcase full of cash and pot to jail. Deputies say. Story begins. It's probably not wise to insist a deputy retrieve your briefcase full of cash and pot when you're being hauled to the slammer on a minor infraction like trespassing. Could be could turn out to be your very own briefcase full of blues. Woman called the sheriff's office last Saturday morning after her expo 
refused to leave her home in Marathon after she let him stay the night, according to a news release from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. When she told him to leave, Pollock refused and laughed at her, the woman reported. 49-year-old man told deputies that he lived at that apartment, but one deputy reminded the gentleman that he had been one of the officers who helped him move out of the residence just a few months earlier. Oops. The woman also had a copy of his current lease showing he lived somewhere else. A check record showed that the suspect had been given a trespass warning to stay away at an earlier date, the release said. Since the suspect had already been warned, the deputy busted him for trespassing after warning and putting him in the back of his patrol car. Prior to leaving the apartment, the suspect allegedly told the deputy he had a briefcase in the residence with a lot of cash inside and wanted to take it with him. Probably should have bagged it. After retrieving the briefcase, the deputy asked the suspect to give him the code to open it. The suspect refused, according to the sheriff's office. Once inside the pokey, the suspect reportedly agreed to open the briefcase. Inside, the deputy found $9,480 in cash and pot, according to the report. The suspect was then charged with possession of marijuana and the introduction of marijuana into a detention facility, and the cash seized. For possible forfeiture. Bum, 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 bum. And that'll do it for this edition of the Sport Shuffle. Back after a hiatus, thanks to, uh, uh, let's just say, technology problems. And we'll be talking at you again real soon, plus coming up with a special podcast probably later in the week. Sort of talking about why the sport shuffle was born and uh, all that sort of stuff probably a more serious type uh, podcast stuff might be more of a tampa motor mouth show uh, look for that one in the little in the middle of the week go raise take game two even though it's a tough one tonight with chris sale pitching and we'll talk at you as i previously said which i just realized i already said but i'm saying it again when we talk at you that's it for me you're still you, unless, of course, you're somebody else. In that case, please seek help. And um, G to the O to the N to the E. Thank you for listening to the Sports Shuffle Podcast. Don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Till next time, hope you stay in the zone.